So I discovered uh, Baldur's Gate when I was making my first RPG, which was called Lady Mage and Knight, which was cancelled uh, back then. And I remember being jealous of, of uh, them being able to work on Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, so um, I remember Baldur's Gate as a game that uh, gave me a, a big world to explore, also about a, as a game that uh, showed me how you could interact with the party. Uh, so I'm now super excited that we get a chance to, to work on uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah, it was really felt like working on any other project we work on internally, right? It didn't really feel like it, we had to really change our gears in terms of how we think of story and how things develop. I mean, I think remember when our, our first meetings getting together and just like laying out like, okay, here's a map of the Baldur's Gate area. Where do we want to go? Yeah. You know, and then some of the ideas coming out of that, the, the kind of what the story arc might look like. It really, for me, I didn't really feel like I was changing how I did things. It was just pure story collaboration. Yeah. It's uh, when you when you look at how we approach our games, uh, we send you on an adventure and we give you lots of systems uh, with which you have to overcome the challenges that are thrown at you. And it's literally what you do in your campaign. So yeah. that was part of it. That it was very very easy to to align ourselves. I, I try not to think of, uh, of the pressure and the fact that people have been waiting for this for so long. I have to say that now with the announcement, I'm super nervous. <laughs> like I, uh, I didn't expect to be this nervous. I thought I was jaded already and that like I, can, I can handle everything, but uh, apparently not. Um, but we're just trying to make a really fun video game and uh, we think we have a really good grasp. Into the, the, our ultimate goal is literally to make a game that we want to play. So we will see uh, what's going to come out of it. I mean, uh, we have a, re a really good team working on it, and these guys have been super supportive. Yeah, I think I'm getting kind of the better end of the bargain right now. <laughs> I, I just get to see the world of D&D come to life in a way that we haven't really seen in a very long time, like Baldur's Gate being fully realized. So I get to almost feel like a player again. If you play one of Mike's campaigns, at some point uh, the Dungeon Master is going to say, well, what will you do now? Or, and in, when it comes to computer and video games, it's always going to be, what can I do? What is are the limits of the system? And so a very big push inside uh, Larian right now is to, how can we give players as much options as possible that they have this feeling that it is, what will you do? And they, can, they, they think of it and they can actually do it. And so uh, we had a long chat about what the vision would be for, for, for Baldur's Gate 3 and why we were a good candidate to make it. But it didn't uh, materialize immediately, it took some time. And then uh, as we were working on Original Sin 2, uh, Nathan called us and he said, well, do you still want to do this? I said, yeah, of course. And so like this, we, it started. Uh, and we, we, before I knew it, I was sitting together with Mike in one room, together with my writers and his writers. Yep. And uh, we were talking story. Yep. It was like making a campaign. Exactly, the way we went. We're obviously, uh, you can see that in the trailer, uh, we're upping the production values tremendously. Uh, this is going to be our biggest game that we've ever made. Uh, we've never had a team so large as the one that we have now working on one game, which is a little bit intimidating also. Uh, but I, the, the ultimate goal is to make this the game that it deserves to be. And uh, I don't know what the, my competitors are doing. Uh, probably I'll find out here at E3. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that uh, what we're making, I, I, I stand behind very strongly and, and so does the entire team. So and um, I think that when people will see it, they will be surprised. What we're showing in the trailer, you see there's a, a, a different visual identity than if you were uh, to look at Divinity Original Sin, for instance. When it comes to upping the production values, what I mean by that is, uh, other than obviously it has to look beautiful, it has to move beautifully, the effects have to be, have to, have to be spectacular. It's also uh, giving you much more depth in the gameplay options that are available. So that, that, that idea of, of being um, in a, a, a game session that is being ran by a competent dungeon master is really present as you play the game. And so that's, uh, I think that is really the key driver through the entire development. Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition is essentially a modern version of a tabletop RPG. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the things that they put in there, we are trying to bring to the video game. Uh, so there are some really clever systems present in there and uh, we are porting the IDs behind those inside of uh, Baldur's Gate 3. In terms of uh, bringing it to a modern audience, tabletop gaming is essentially about using your creativity with the systems that are presented to you. So what we're doing is giving you uh, an easy way to access those systems and then letting you fool around and then have the game react to that in ways that you didn't expect so that when you're playing it, you get the feeling like, uh, can I do this? Oh, that worked, I can actually do this. And you get all excited about it as you're playing it. And it's something that we try to do with Original Sin 2, but we're pushing much further now with, with BG3. Yeah, and I think that process is such at the root of Dungeons & Dragons. You know, whether you're playing 
a, a, a video game, a computer game, or playing at the tabletop. It's that sense of discovery, yeah. you know, that open-ended nature of it, you know, and I think that's why the collaboration has worked so well because yeah. we have such similar design goals. I mean, the, it's literally the idea that the, that the game is your dungeon master and it comes up with a really logical response to whatever shenanigans that you are doing inside of the world and uh, whatever it is. Uh, so, and uh, once you start discovering that, you get very rapidly invested in the game world, and that's that's literally what we're looking after. What was fun for me from my standpoint as creative director is you're sort of setting the table but you're not really making the meal you're letting other people come in and pick out what is it that they want to use and it's been really fun seeing that evolution you know as you've been working on the storyline and approaching the mechanics uh you know i mentioned earlier i like the feeling of being a fan again you know where i just see someone working and obviously there's a collaborative aspect but at, at one point you know at some point we you know obviously in our creative relationship like we were set and then you're going off and executing and we're just getting updates back. And it's really like, I, I think I'm as excited as anyone else to play this game, right? Like it just, and it just, cause it just feels so cool to see D&D &D coming to life, but then see other creators coming in and making their mark on it. You know, that's, I think what's so exciting to me about D&D cause it parallels so well with what D&D is to so many people. It's their creative outlet. You know, I think it's important for us to preserve that across our platforms, whether it is you're at the tabletop making your own campaign or you're playing someone's vision of what D&D can be. So uh, the slogan of the game is uh, gather your party uh, because that was very much uh, the thing about Baldur's Gate 1 and also definitely about uh, Baldur's Gate 2. Uh, so as in Original Sin 2 we want you to be able to play either in single player or in multiplayer. We want you to be able to uh, have, if you're playing in multiplayer, a, a heroic role, that there's a heroic role for every single person who is in the party, uh, but each with their own problems, each with their own ambitions, uh, also with their own uh, quest lines, uh, pretty much what we did with the origin stories back in Original Sin 2, but with a much, much bigger focus on the party, because the party was really central uh, to, to the previous Baldur's Gates, so that is a, that's a big differentiator versus what we were doing uh, in Original Sin 2, and I think we've, we've come up with pretty exciting mechanics that at some point we will share uh, with, with, with the world. So that is a, um, it's a big thing. The other thing is that uh, since we're uh, giving support for Stadia also, uh, it's going to be possible to just send a link to somebody and then just jump into the game. And that's a big thing because uh, we make games that take a long time to play. It can t take over 100 hours to play campaigns. And if you've played the original Sin 2, for instance, in multiplayer and you had a campaign with somebody who was away from you, uh, it could have taken a year by the time you finished your campaign. And so maybe with Stadia integration, the fact that you can play anywhere, uh, people will be able to hop on easier. Uh, maybe in the hotel room and somebody else is on their laptop. Uh, you should be able to, to play. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens with that. The D&D was, a, for a very long time when I worked on, I, I've been working on D&D for like, for 14 years now. And I used to always run into people who would tell me, when I told them my job, they would always say, oh, I always wanted to play D&D, but I never really had the chance or it seemed intimidating. And now, basically the same type of person I'm meeting and they're actually playing D&D. And that to me is like the most, it, it's a wonderful feeling. You know, being uh, almost a lifetime fan of the game, I started flat. I think I was first exposed to it when I was like six years old, and it, even at that age, it captivated me. I think the most exciting thing about it is seeing the worlds that have really, for a long time, existed for me, like just in my mind. You know, what, if you're at the table playing, you're describing things, or if I'm at work, you know, and you're, you're hunched over word processor writing, and now to see them really come to life in a new way. And I, I, I am one of those. In, in my job, I, I write. You know, I'm a I'm a creature of words. But my favorite part of my job is when we have a concept art push and I start seeing like the first pass on art for a monster or location. This is like that multiplied by, multiplied by 10 because it's not just a static image it's, and it's, it's not just a moving image, but thinking that this is a world now I can enter a part of this world that I've been working on for almost 15 years and I get to wander around and mess with it. Like it, it's so exciting to me, you know, because to me it just feels like it's a natural evolution of Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I was one of those players who played the heck out of the old gold box games and Baldur's Gate, you know, when it came out. I probably spent more time, more hours at a computer playing D&D than at, at, a, at a tabletop. So for, for me, uh, it's, it's a multitude of things. I mean, like, um, I've been making RPGs for some time and uh, Dungeons and Dragons has always been a go-to to get inspiration <laughs> because they've been doing it for a very long time. So, and uh, as a matter of fact, my, my second fantasy series that I've ever read was uh, uh, Dragonlance. Oh, classic, uh, so classic. that was uh, the first one was, was Lord of the Rings. 
Uh, so the chance of uh, visualizing this and fooling around and using all of those systems and some of the favorite systems that are, that are in there uh, in a video game is, 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 is something very cool. And then the other thing is, uh, this is Baldur's Gate 3. People have been waiting for it for a very, very, very long time. Uh, so it's a big challenge for my team and so uh, I have a very talented team. Uh, so I'm very curious to see how far they're going to push it because they are, they are very big Dungeons and Dragons players. I think we have sessions going on pretty much all the time. Uh, so I'm very curious to see where, how far they're going to take it because the... Uh, so I'm the director on it, so I come up with an idea says this is what we're going to do by the, the week after. That idea has already transformed into something much bigger. <laughs> and uh, so what the end game is going to be, well, well, we'll have to find out. I think it's going to be good.